Hello and welcome to the Week in 7 Questions and welcome to our special guest, Angelos Chrysogelos. Angelos, you're in London, right? So are you reopening or are you already back in a new lockdown? Well, Roland, one way to answer your question is to look at my hair. It's still pretty difficult to find an open hairdresser in London. The UK is slowly reopening, but the pandemic period was so haunting and difficult with more than 40,000 deaths that honestly, I'm still staying home as much as I can. Most of us continentals had already written the Brits off, but here comes Oxford with the first medical breakthrough against Corona. Good news for the UK, right? Good news, and the UK really needed good news. By the way, Oxford and Imperial are also on the cutting edge of vaccine development. It's a good reminder that UK politics may be crazy, but UK research, academia, and universities remain top notch. The EU better make sure to keep its doors open to them in the future. Boris Johnson's popularity seems to be tanking. Why is that? Believe it or not, not because of thousands of deaths or a major economic recession that is coming, it's mostly because his chief advisor and the architect of Brexit, Dominic Cummings, broke the rules and drove five hours out of London while everyone else was in lockdown. This really annoyed the Brits and it's been bad news and bad press for the government ever since. Brexit negotiations are stalling again. Is a hard Brexit looming now? I have actually always been a Brexit optimist and I think most of the times I got it right. Now again, things look dire, but if I had to bet again, I put my money on the UK and the EU realizing at the very last moment that a hard Brexit right now would be a very, very foolish decision. How can we best prepare for a constructive, if not loving, cross-channel relationship? Working on facing up to China and Russia? How about we just let China and Russia do the job for us? Brexit may be traumatic, but if everyone in London and Brussels stays professional, it's only a matter of time until our paths meet again. External threats are just too big for this not to happen. Is populism in Europe waxing or waning in the aftermath of the pandemic? Tough to say. Normally populism takes a long time to incubate. It doesn't just appear after a crisis. It's a long asymptomatic virus, not unlike COVID. The good news is we still have time. The planned EU recovery fund is a good first step to address the economic effects of the crisis. I remember you're a fan of 1980s rock music. So which song or album would best summarize post-Brexit Britain? I am really tempted to say Disintegration by The Cure, but I will be just a bit more optimistic and say Confusion by New Order. Because right now, nobody knows anything. The only thing certain is that Brexit is not turning out the way its supporters had initially hoped. Well, thank you, F. Haristo, and thank you all for watching. And next week, we'll be back with another surprise guest. Thank you.